guys, it's Mia here, and welcome back once again to another bookish video. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, but that's because, like you all know, I'm a slow reader and I like to take my time with stories. So, let's get into this. It's been a while. But today, we are going to be talking about a book that I actually borrowed from my aunt over Easter, and that is... We all looked up by Tommy Wallace. Sorry if I mispronounce names throughout this. Some of them are different and I've never really seen them before. So I'm going to warn you guys right off the bat. This book is not a nice book. It does not sugarcoat things. It does not like baby its readers. So if you are someone dealing with existential dread, depression, thoughts of self-harm, just all of those sort of things, or if you're a an assault survivor or stuff like that, then this is the type of book that you want to skip, and you'll probably want to skip this review altogether because like I said, it does not sugarcoat these topics and it does not hold the reader's hand. This is a book designed more to make you think than it is to be fun. So if you have any of those triggers, assault, self-harm thoughts, existential dread, just just skip this book altogether because it's not a nice book. So with that, and assuming all of those people that do not want those things are gone, and that I've given them enough time to leave if they do have those issues and don't want to hear about it in a book. Great. For those of you that are still here, let's talk about this. So, this book is another book that likes to switch perspectives on us. We're not following a single character this whole book. Instead, we follow four. We follow Peter, the popular jock into sports boy we follow andy the wrong side of the tracks into stuff he shouldn't be into like weed and stuff like that um anita a good girl who has strict parents that want a certain future for her but she doesn't want that because she wants to be a singer so she has to deal with that and the slut of the group self-proclaimed Elijah, Elijah, one of the two those are the four main characters we're following with a bunch of side characters to get into now this book like I said with the reason I said it's about people with existential dread would not want to read this book is because it's about the entire world of this book having only two months to live and the reason that they have only two months to live is because there is an asteroid threatening to crash into Earth and they can see the asteroid coming closer and closer and closer to Earth and each day it gets closer the world gets more chaotic because people are like what do we have to live for this asteroid's coming to kill us all we won't be here in two months anyway. So we follow the four characters that I mentioned, Peter, Anita, Andy, Alicia, Elijah, and they are all from the same high school and they're in what they call a caress, which is people faded together to be together, like I guess. That's how the book described it, but I've never really heard that word before reading this book. So Andy is a kid from the wrong side of the tracks. He has this horrible friend. I wouldn't even call him a friend. I would call him the devil on your shoulder in that analysis because he is a friend that no one should have and no one deserves. And he is very much the reason that I said if you have thoughts of self-harm and things like that, then this is a book you should absolutely skip and you shouldn't even be on this video if you have those thoughts. And this friend that Andy has is Bobo. 
And the reason that I bring Bobo into the equation is because he is a very heavily featured character, even though he is a side character. And Bobo... <laughs> who wait. I'm going to talk about this because it is important to talk about and important to talk about to say why you shouldn't want these things for yourself. So all through the book, Bobo is mad at Andy and we're like, why is he so mad? Andy keeps talking about breaking this promise, breaking this pact, but why was this pact so important and what was the pact? And this is the part that really angers me. And the pact ended up being that Bobo had broken up with his girlfriend, he was in a tough spot, and he was depressed. And he wanted to end it all, but he didn't want to do it alone. He wanted Andy to go through it with him. And I don't just mean go through it as be there and support him, I mean to end it all as well. But Andy was like, I have so much to live for, I haven't even lived my own life on my own yet. I'm only 16, I think he was at the time of the pact. He ends up not going through with it and calling the hospital to get Bobo help. Because Andy didn't want to go through with that, which good on Andy, great, he, did, he was mad at Andy. Like, what a horrible human being. You're mad at someone because they wouldn't end their life for you. That is sick. Guys, I have said it over and over on this channel, and I will say it again. Even though you get to a point where you feel like you are nothing, there are people out there that are going to miss you, that love you, and I know that me saying that probably won't change anything. And if you have a friend that is saying, I'm in a shit place, I want you to go through with this with me, get them help and step away. Because a friend that actually cares about you would not ask you to do that for them. It's one thing to talk them off the ledge, it's another to let them drag you down with them. I told you this book does not hold its punches. And another thing, Peter was one of my favorite characters. I don't normally like the jock jerk stereotype, but he was not the jock jerk. He was just a jock. He cared about his family. He cared about his sister. He cared about his friends. He was willing to do anything for them. He was a jock, yes, but he was not the I'm so popular, I think I'm above everybody kind of jock. He, he was the only character in this book that got treated as badly as he did, especially by Bobo, Bobo's drug kingpin and his kingpin's men. Bobo is an all-around terrible character, and I absolutely hate him, but I think that was intentional for him to be hated anyway. And what he did to Peter was terrible, all because Peter wanted to save his sister from him because he kidnapped her. Anyway, I'm ranting about this character, Bobo, because I hate him so much, and I hate his actions. He is a manipulative, abusive kidnapper who doesn't care about anybody but himself and yikes but then you have the girls i've talked about andy talked about peter the girls they're fine they're not really the best to follow especially probably um alicia elijah however the hell you say her name <laughs> She is my least favorite character, probably because her story of part of things is the least interesting. The most interesting part about her was that she had this crush on Peter, but that's about it. I could care less about her side of the story. So, like I said, this takes place with an asteroid coming in two months to wipe out the entire world. 
And this book makes you think all about how, well, well, shoot, if that's happening in the book, that can happen in real life, too. What if I only got two months to live? Or what if I only had so much time left? What would I do differently with my life? And who would I apologize to and talk to and reconnect with? And would I go for my dream or would I leave it to the side? It's all about making you th think about life and making you... I guess appreciate it more because you don't know when it's going to end. I mean, none of us do. It could end right now. It just... We don't know. It's it's about living life to the fullest and not giving up and throwing a party at the end of the world. That's literally what they do. They throw a party at the end of the world. And... There was something that the guidance counselor said to Andy that really made me think. And he had asked Andy, do you ever read? Uh, do you ever read? And he goes, no, I'm not much of a reader. And the teacher goes, we read not because we want to be just entertained, but because we notice that people have the same thoughts we already thought, but didn't really know anyone else thought. And I thought that was really cool, and I know I didn't paraphrase it well because I don't exactly remember how it was worded. It'll be up on screen in front of me anyway, so you guys can see the quote of it. But did I enjoy this book? In a thought-provoking way, yes. In an enjoyment sort of way, no. There was a lot of riots, parties, teen drama, Horrible, horrible, horrible people coming out of the woodwork. Robo and his drug friends included. And I really don't like how it ended. Like, it was supposed to leave it up in the air, but it felt very disappointing for me in how it ended. But if you're looking for a book designed more to make you think and make you want to look at your life a little differently, then this is the book for you. But like I said, for some reason, if you're still here, and this book is interesting to you, just be mindful that there is some really triggering stuff. Thoughts of self-harm, drug use, abuse, assault in the sexual way, and assault in the normal way, both ways. So, and like I said, this is about people who have two months to live, so if you have experienced existential dread, this is not for you either. I highly recommend skipping it, but if you're someone that wants a thought-provoking book and wants a different perspective on the world or a more grounded book, then this is the book for you. So, now the book that I think I'm going into next was actually a book I found via a YouTube booktuber that I watch, Maria Murphy, and that is Brandon Sanderson's Skyward. And Murphy talks about Brandon Sanderson so much in her videos and in these books specifically I have one and two and I believe she said it's a duology and I didn't see any of the other books there when I went to the bookstore so I'm hoping it's a duology and I'm hoping I will like the first one because I already got the second one. So that's what I'm going to go into next, the Brandon Sanderson's. I'm really excited to read it because she has talked so highly of it. And yeah, so that's it for me. Okay, finally, that's it for me. Alright, hope to see you next time. Bye, guys.